Hi, my name's Anna Miller. I'm the associate pastor here at First United Methodist Church, and I am so glad you're joining me for a midweek message. We are reading through the Red Sea Rules by Robert Morgan, so if you'd like to pick up a book and read along with us, we invite you to do that. Today, we continue our Red Sea journey with rule number two, that we are to be more concerned for God's glory than for our relief. We're to be more concerned for God's glory than our relief. And we're going to flesh this out a little bit. Today we're going to be reading in Exodus 14, number three and four verses. Let's hear what God is doing and what the Israelites are doing. The Pharaoh will say of the Israelites, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has closed in on them and I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will pursue them so that I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So here we are. We find the Israelites. They have been released from bondage by God from Egypt under Pharaoh's rule for 420 years. And so they are journeying out of Egypt the Pharaoh let them go, but then they find themselves at the Red Sea. And so they're trapped in because Pharaoh, his heart changed and he wanted his people back. And so here they are trapped between the Pharaoh and his army in hot pursuit in this impassable Red Sea. And they are bewildered. They are closed in. Now, honestly, if this were me, I don't know about rule number two. I would be thinking, God, get me out of this mess. I might even pray, God, get me out of this mess. And when you do, I'll praise you and glorify you if you do. I promise I will. But that's really not what rule number two says. Rule number two says that we should be more concerned with God's glory at times, at all times, even in difficult times, and that this is more important than us finding relief or getting out of that difficult circumstance. And so we're gonna flesh this out a little bit. But you know, a thought that came to my mind was a book that I had read by Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life, years ago. And honestly, he could have just wrote, written the first sentence and then called it a book. It's so true. And it says, it's not about you. It's not about you. You see, we were first created by God, for God, to have fellowship with Him. We were created for His pleasure. God created everything in heaven and in earth for His pleasure. All things are for His glory. You know, the psalmist writes, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how majestic is your name, King of kings, Lord of lords. If you've ever watched a period piece, you would have heard that common phrase that they say very often, it's at the king's pleasure or whatever the king desires. It's not a new phrase or concept, but rather found as early as even the Old Testament. We find one such instance in Ezra. Ezra 5.17 says, Now if it pleases the king, let a search be made in the royal archives of Babylon to see if King Cyrus did in fact issue a decree to build the house of God in Jerusalem. And then let the king send us his decision in the matter. You see, they inquired of their earthly king, King Cyrus at the time, for direction. And what, what was the king's pleasure? If it pleases the king, then we will do this. And I wonder, do we inquire of our king, of our Lord, our God, and how we might please our heavenly father? How we might glorify him? How we might in turn build up his kingdom on earth through our life? So what exactly is God doing here? What is the king's pleasure in this situation with the Israelites? What we find is that the Israelites are bewildered. They are closed in. 
Pharaoh's heart has been hardened. He's pursuing them. But we are, we are told here that God will gain honor over Pharaoh and over his army, that God did this so that the Egyptians, the enemy of the Israelites, might know that he is Lord. I like this verse where it says, it says, but in some translations and in some translations, it says, and or but so that so that I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over the army that the Egyptians may know that I am Lord. God deliberately orchestrated the Exodus event so that he could demonstrate his power, so that he could show that he is Lord over all people, even the enemy, even over the elements of the sea. God is greater than all because he is God. He is the almighty God of heaven and earth and all that is in them. God is greater. I think when we find ourselves, at least me, when I find myself in a difficult situation, it's unless I embrace this truth that God is greater than, God is greater than my situation, God is greater than this evil that might be going on at the moment. Unless I own this truth and believe it, it's going to be very difficult to accept and embrace rule number two, to be more concerned for God's glory than for my relief in my difficult time. Why did God allow the situation? He's very clear. He says, so that the Egyptians will know that I am Lord. You see, it's not just for the Egyptians. 2,000 plus years later, it's for us that we would know that God is Lord and that he is greater than whatever difficult situation we are going through. God led the Israelites right in this difficult spot so that even the enemy might know that he is Lord. Now, we might ask, in our situation, God, how are you going to be glorified in this difficult spot, in this Red Sea dilemma that I'm going through right now? Because all I can see is the enemy around me. You're going to have to show me you're, because I can't see past this impassable Red Sea before me. I can't see past the enemy in hot pursuit. So instead of thinking about this hard, fast rule number two, what that we are to be more concerned for God's glory than our relief. Maybe we think about our situation like this. Maybe we say God is greater than my situation. God is greater than my enemy. God is greater than evil. God is greater than my grief. God is greater than my pain. God is greater than my sin. God is greater than me because he is king of kings. He is Lord of lords. He is my Lord. You see, God promises us. We know from Psalm 50, 15, when we call upon him in the day of our trouble, that he will deliver us and that he will glorify himself in and through us. God says, you shall glorify me when I deliver you. And when God does deliver us out of those terrible situations, it is so that he can proclaim his goodness and mercy toward us. And we in turn proclaim that goodness and mercy that we have seen, that he has shown us to other people. And then that is when God is glorified through us. You know, when we are in that pit of despair, it's hard to look and see anything. It's hard to look anywhere but up. We, we look up to our King. When we look up to our Lord, He promises to give us a future and a, and a hope. He promises to deliver us out of the situation. When we call on Him for His help, and there are some situations that we just absolutely cannot get out of 
without God's divine intervention. And so we call upon God in our darkest hour for a way of escape. You know, Jesus, when he was on the cross, he called out to God in his darkest hour. He cried out to the Father in heaven when he was faced with his death. And he admitted, as we uh, find in the book of John and in the Gospels, Jesus says on the cross, now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, relieve me from this hour? Deliver me from this hour? No. It is for this purpose that I came to this hour, Father, to glorify your name. And many around Jesus, Jesus heard the voice of God. All those around heard this voice from heaven say, I have glorified my name and I will glorify it again. God is greater than death. Jesus overcame the ultimate enemy of death so that God might gain honor and glory through Jesus and then through us, even in our Red Sea dilemma. God is greater than death because Jesus suffered and gave all that we might have life. It is because of Jesus' birth and life and death and resurrection that we can have eternal life. And this is our Christian hope. You see, it's not about us, but rather it's about God. And it's about us giving God glory in whatever situation we find ourselves in. It may be a good situation. It may be a very difficult situation. But it's about God. One thing is for sure is that God is all about you. God is all about us. He loves us beyond what we could ever imagine. And he wants to give us a future and a hope. And that's why he sent Jesus. And so I ask you today, are you more concerned with giving God our Lord and our King, King Jesus, him glory and pleasing him? Or are we more concerned about ourselves about having relief in a situation. God desires to deliver us. He desires to redeem us. He desires for us to take pleasure in Him and what He has done for us and what He will continue to do for us, that He will deliver us from all things because God is greater. God wants to glorify his life in you and through you so that you through others will also, you to others, so that others will also through you come to know Jesus is their Lord and their Savior. You have purpose for your life, God in you, and then your life for others that they too may know life with God. Today, I want to end with with Psalm 8. It is a beautiful scripture that the psalmist writes that gives praise and honor and glory to God. I think maybe sometimes we don't glorify God as much as he deserves. And so today, we're just going to take a moment and glorify him and give him praise. And this will be sort of our prayer and our closing benediction with Psalm 8. O oh Lord, how majestic, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouths of babes and infants. You have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the, and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? mortals that you care for them, yet you have made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all option, ox and sheep, and also the beast of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. 
O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. To God be the glory in your life this week. I hope you have a great week, and I'll see you next time.